Welcome back to Hero Arts. This video is on distress watercolor stamping along with a few other techniques for distress. These are the three cards I'm going to be showing you. They all have this watercolor stamped fern, but then also different te um, techniques of distressing added to each. First I'm just going to show you how I stamp the fern. This is a Hero Arts stamp and I'm just going to add different colors of distress ink to the stamp. You can use other inks, however I find that this works best because it's designed to do interesting things when mixed with water. So, you know, you can try the chalk inks, you can do other dye inks and get good results, but not quite as wonderful and as impressive as the distress inks. So I've added some blue, or some, I'm sorry, some greens to this uh, image. Now I'm going back with the corner, the edge of my ink pad, and adding a little bit of brown. And this is a fired brick red. And you can see I'm just doing little touches of red here and there. It looks really neat when it's stamped. And this is broken china, which is a blue color. So I've added all those colors. Now I'm going to spritz on some water. And you can see it kind of um, pooling up on there. The more water you add, the more splotchy it looks when you stamp it. Now I'm stamping onto watercolor paper, but you can use regular paper. But I really like the watercolor better. Now you can see it's wet here, and I'm heating it with a heat gun. You could just let it dry, but I'm, I'm pretty impatient, so I just go ahead and um, help it uh, dry quicker. So you can see how that red and that blue really makes it pop. So now I'm going to start by showing you some of the things you can do with this uh, stamped image. This first one I'm going to show you it has these distressed edges that are kind of roughened up and I added some color to them. So I use this great distressing tool called my fingernail. It's just one less tool for me to keep track of. There are distressing tools out there that you can use or you can use the edge of uh, a craft knife or scissors so you can roughen it up this way. Whatever works best for you or whatever you're more comfortable with. Now I thought it would be fun to add a little bit of color. To do this, I just squirted some water onto this craft mat. This is a craft mat from Ranger. You could also do this on you know, a piece of glass or a plate or something. And I'm taking, picking up the water on the paintbrush and then picking up some color for my Distress Ink Pad. So you can see I'm adding some red right to the torn edge. And I'm going to wipe that off on a dirty old baby wipe there. Now I'm going to get some blue, pick up some blue. I like to touch the edge of the ink pad so that I'm not adding a ton of water to the actual ink pad itself. So you can see I'm picking up some blue here. And this again will work with other inks but the color is really vibrant with these distress inks. Now if you don't want to touch a wet paintbrush to your ink pad you could do this. You could dry off the ink pad, or the, I'm sorry, dry off the paintbrush, touch it to the, um, the pad itself and then dip it in the water like I did with the green. So you can see the color here, right on the, the roughed up edge. And here is the completed card with that. Now on this one, I did some uh, distressing to the edge. And I like that when you do this on the textured watercolor paper, it picks up that texture. So I'm using this ink applicator from Ranger, and I'm starting by rubbing on the paper next to it and then working my way onto the paper. Uh, this keeps better control of the ink and you can dab off the excess so you don't end up with big like square blocks of it when you first touch the paper. See how easy that is? It looks really nice. It gives a nice aged look. So here you can see the completed card. Now I also wanted to show you how I did the shine on the petals of this card. See those, that little bit of shine right there? This is how I like to do this. There's many ways but I like to take these uh, liquid pearls. Hero Art sells these. They're from Ranger. And I'm adding water to it on the craft mat, mixing it up so it's like a real thin paint. Because if I kept it solid without adding the water, then it would, um, wouldn't let the color show through as much. So I'm watering it down and just adding it directly to the uh, leaves on this image. Now I'm add, adding a little bit of heat to it with the heat gun so that it dries quickly and you can see the shine that results. Now on this one, I did a little bit of distressing by stamping over it with an antique looking stamp. 
So you can see the image here. I've got this stamp. This is from Hero Arts, and I'm going to use a tea dye ink. This is Distress Ink again. And I'm going to stamp this over the image, but I want it to be lighter. So I'm going to stamp off real lightly first. Now, without re-inking, I'm going to stamp it over my image. So you can see the results. Now on the, the uh, sample card I did, I didn't stamp off first. So you can see the difference. So you could do either way. Now this is one way to ink up the edges, just going directly with the ink pad to the edge of the paper. This gives you like a real crisp edge, but you can see how soft it is if you use the ink applicator instead. So that's just two different ways to ink up the edges. Whatever works better for your specific project or whatever you like, but you can see how smoothly this goes on and makes like a soft edge as opposed to that crisp edge. So here are all the cards shown together, and you can see how by spritzing the ink stamp with water, you get like a watercolor look. It looks like it's been hand painted. This is a technique that Hero Arts has been doing for years, so be sure to check out our, our website for more ideas. Thanks for stopping by to watch another of our videos. Be sure to stop back.